Hello and welcome back. So today I'm going to be using a thermal imaging camera to check out how you can get longer recording times out of your Nikon Z8 and avoid overheating issues. Now before I recorded this video, I didn't realize I was going to fall down this rabbit hole as deeply as I did. I have lost days recording videos on the Nikon Z8 and the heat implications. So um, come on, let's get into it and I'll talk you through it and walk you through it. Now this video applies to both photography and videography. So it's not just about video. But to really push the camera, I'm going to be recording video. And I'm going to be recording an 8K 60P in NRAW in high quality mode at ISO 4000. I'm also going to be recording a moving subject with two faces on it. So the camera is going to be constantly hunting, looking for that face and focusing. This is going to stress the Nikon Z8 as much as you can possibly do it. For all these recordings then, I'm going to be using the ProGrade Gold Gen 4 CF Express Type B memory card. And I have a link up here to a previous video I did on this card. And I'm also going to leave that link in the description down below too as well. Now you might well say, why would you use a Gen 4 card? Because the camera is not capable of using the bandwidth of a Gen 4 card. It's a Gen 3 slot actually in the camera itself. Well, it's got to do with the bandwidth on the card, but it's also got to do with the higher efficiency of the card because this card does run very cool. The Gen 4 ProGrade Gold card seems to be the real sweet spot between price and performance. So what are the common suggestions people make to help your Nikon Z8 run cooler? The first being obviously is to use a good card. So we've that done. I'm not going to talk about that anymore. The next thing that people generally suggest is to pull the back LCD screen out a bit from the camera body. And this is something I would have recommended myself. People also recommend using USB PD or USB power delivery to help power the camera. And that's also something I would use myself too as well. The other thing I've seen people suggest is to leave the battery door open and the card slot door open. Now that's something I generally wouldn't do. And finally, the last suggestion I've seen people make is to use a camera cage or an L bracket to help suck heat or draw heat away from the camera body. So do they work? Let's check them out with the thermal imaging camera and see, does this actually work? So firstly, I'm going to do your bog standard recording, everything as is in the camera, the back LCD in, using its own battery power, just to get a baseline. And I'm going to do a few different recordings to see what the average time I'm getting out of the camera is. So as you can see, this is the recording setup here. The Nikon Z8 is sitting on the table, not moving, and there's two mannequin heads on a turntable. The camera is constantly having to focus. It's using eye detect, it's detecting the background, it's constantly focusing and constantly trying to keep up with the image. So it's really torturing the Z8 in these circumstances. So looking at a thermal image then of the Z8, you can see the camera quite clearly here. Now you notice up in the top left hand corner of the image, you have two temperatures. One saying 23.5 degrees Celsius. That's always going to be what the white cross is actually pointing at on the screen. The red cross then is your maximum temperature in the picture, which in this state is 29.9 degrees Celsius. The crazy thing about this is the camera has only been on for a few minutes but already on the back LCD display you can see there is a very hot spot starting to show up. It's already six degrees above the camera body temperature. As we go to the next photograph then after another couple of minutes you can see that's after rising again to 31.2 degrees and the main camera body is still at 22.8 degrees. The next thing you'll notice here then is the HDMI and the side sockets here in this shot. The HDMI sockets are 30.7 degrees. Even though the rubber caps are still on them, it's reading that through the rubber caps. And you can see the LCD display is now at 33 degrees Celsius. That's an awful lot of heat just coming from those two spots. By the time the hot card warning has come on, you can see those side sockets even still through the rubber covers is at 35 degrees Celsius. Then quickly moving around to the back, you can see the back LCD screen here is at 37.6, whereas the card slot cover is at 30.4 degrees. The underneath of the camera then, you can see the maximum temperature there is 34.9, but that is just in a specific 
hot spot. On the battery then, you can see the general core temperature is roughly around 30 degrees. But what gets really interesting is when we look inside in the battery compartment, you can see the maximum temperature reading is 44.6 degrees and 38.6 is the average on that white spot there. That heat is coming from the top LCD display, the power delivery circuitry, and also the CF Express card, which is positioned right alongside it. And I think this is the main issue. Then looking at the card slot, you can see the max temperature of 48.2 and 43.6 is where the white point is on. That's incredible heat coming out of the camera. And that heat has been building up while that camera is being recorded. So it's going to take a long time for that heat to dissipate. Looking at the card, then it shows 50.8 is the maximum temperature. That's not correct. The card had been out of the camera and not working for about 20, 30 seconds. So it had dropped a bit. When I've tested this, while the card was actually in the camera, the temperature was recorded at around 55 degrees Celsius. In the standard recording then, the hot card warning came up after about a minute and 20 seconds on average across the recordings I did. I would let the camera record until the 512 gigabyte card was full and then quickly delete the recording and put it back on recording again. So it would have recorded for 11 minutes and 40 seconds and then in the second recording it lasted for about 1 minute and 20 seconds. That's just over 13 minutes recording time in total. I was a small bit concerned about something and it's something I wanted to try before I did the next lot of recordings. So I let the camera cool down for about 45 minutes and then I checked the temperature on the card slots, on the back LCD, the camera body and everything else. All the temperatures seemed to be fine. So I started another recording and this is where I hit the problem I was expecting to see. Unsurprisingly, the hot card warning came up after about 10 minutes and 43 seconds in the first recording. That's about two and a half minutes of a shorter recording time, even though the camera had been left cool down for 45 minutes and all the external temperatures on the camera body showed up as normal. Now, this is the issue I was expecting to see. And you might say, what's the reason for it? Well, the reason for it being is heat is building up in the camera body that can't be dissipated. And that's where we're getting our problem from. To help us understand this a bit better, I have a few screenshots here taken from the Kalari stripped down video on the Nikon Z8. So you can see exactly where the heat is building up. You can see the heat sinks and how the heat is being transferred out of the camera itself. This is incredibly important in order to be able to understand how your Z8 behaves when it starts to heat up. Now, as you can see in the video, this is our processor. And this is the CF Express card slot. They're both right next to each other and these two are the two main heat sources in your camera. Having the two of them side by side is both a problem and it's also an incredibly handy thing to have because it means you just need to dissipate the heat from that one specific section. And as you can see, the heat sink or the RF shield moves across the camera body. There are mounting points and screws fitted through so it's acting as an art and it's also acting as a heat transfer to the second layer of the camera. With the top printed circuit board now taken out, you can now see the larger heat sink underneath. This seems to be our main heat store. And this is our problem area. And this is what we want to keep heat away from because it's embedded deeper into the camera. Looking at the heat sink from the side, you can see it's a reasonably substantial heat sink. Now this is where things get interesting. You can see here in the bottom corner, there's a screw linking both heat sinks together. But not only that, you can also see that heat sink is also connecting to the USB-C port and the USB-C port above that. And I believe it's also connecting up to the HDMI port too as well. That's why those sockets are getting so hot. Which brings us to the next point. Can we use that to our advantage? Can we suck heat away through those USB and HDMI ports? Then looking underneath, you can quite clearly see the tripod mount is directly connected to the metal base on the camera itself. That would then explain why the camera body is showing up as being so hot in these thermal images. So this all means all that heat is being soaked in to the internals of the camera body and it's very slow to be released. So this video is actually even more important than I thought it was going to be. In this recording then, 
I basically set everything up exactly the same. After letting the camera cool down completely for four hours, I started recording, but this time with the back LCD pulled out completely. And this is what shocked me. I really wasn't expecting this. After only a couple of minutes, you can see the LCD is starting to heat up. That's the white point on the screen. It's 32.7 degrees. But the camera body behind the LCD is already at 35.2 degrees Celsius. That's the heat from the heatsink and the processor starting to come through. Again, a bit later on into the recording, you can see it moves up to 36.2 degrees Celsius. There's some serious heat coming off the back of the camera body. It rises to 36.9 degrees Celsius, and then just at the hot card warning, you can see it reaches 40.1 degrees Celsius. That is an incredible amount of heat being trapped in behind the LCD. And even the LCD is getting hot in exactly the same position. So pulling that LCD back off the back of the camera really did help the recording time. And it improved the recording time by just over one minute. So now we're going to do another recording, but this time using USB PD or USB power delivery. And for this, I'm going to use my newer V-mount battery to power the camera itself. By the way, there's a review coming up on this very soon too as well. While USB PD only seems to have helped the recording time for a couple of seconds, I have also tried the camera for hour-long use, nearly across the day too as well, using it in USB PD, and it does help reduce the buildup of heat inside in the camera. Because of the fact that the battery isn't being used as much, it's not heating up as much. And that heat right alongside the card slot and the processor doesn't help. On the left of the screen here, we have the battery from the first test, which was just battery powered. On the right then, we have the battery from the USB PD test. And as you can see, the main temperature difference between the two of them is 3 degrees. Please disregard the maximum temperatures because the CF Express card is giving a false reading in the background. But the 3 degree difference, if you're shooting for hours on an end in 4K, that is going to make a big difference to the internal heat generated inside in the camera. For the next round of testing, I used both an L bracket and a camera cage on my Z8 to see if it could help to suck away some of that heat from the camera body. But again, in all honesty, across the tests I did, it only made seconds of a difference on average. There were literally seconds of a difference. So I genuinely didn't think it was worthwhile putting that into the video. But then I had thought, remember, the USB and the HDMI sockets on the side of the camera were getting very warm too as well. And looking at the internal layout, you can see why, because they're practically directly connected to that heatsink, which is mounted to both the card slot and the processor. So I started thinking, is there some way I can get the heat out there? And that's where I thought, in my newer CA041 camera cage, there's actually sort of cable mounts or strain relief systems in place. So I was thinking, if I plugged a USB cable, USB-C cable in here, and my HDMI cable in here, because I have ones with metal, con metal connections on them, would they help to suck away that heat if I mounted it on to the actual camera cage? So this is the camera cage itself fitted to the Nikon Z8. And here you can see the HDMI and USB ports with that side strain relief bracket too as well, and the three mounting screws on the side to lock the connections in place. And after running the test in with the newer CA041 camera cage and the strain relief mounting brackets for the HDMI and USB, you could actually see the time dropping even further. It was dropping about 30 to 40 seconds per recording. Looking at the thermal images then, you can see the HDMI and USB sockets are around 36.1, which is highlighted by the red X, whereas the actual strain relief bracket is at 26.5. So the strain relief bracket and the HDMI and USB cables are after increasing the temperature on the camera cage by over 3 degrees Celsius. So that's 3 degrees Celsius that's being sucked 
out of the actual camera by those HDMI and USB connections. As the hot card warning has come on, the actual camera temperature is after rising to 40 degrees, whereas the camera cage on the base is only 25.6. At the very same time, the strain relief bracket is at 27.4 degrees Celsius. And crazily, the HDMI connection is at 29.1 degrees Celsius. Looking at the overhead shot then, you could quite clearly see the HDMI socket, USB socket and strain relief are sucking heat out of the camera. But I was thinking, hey, if it's sucking the heat away, does that mean that the heat doesn't go into the camera body as much? So I had no idea. I then re-ran all the tests again because they said, look, who's going to be using their camera? And then it's time to let the camera cool down for 45 minutes or an hour or two hours at a time. I was thinking 20 minutes seems kind of about right. If you're shooting video, you might need 20 minutes to set everything up long again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it cool down for 20 minutes, rerun all the tests and see how much of a difference it's going to make then. So just to be clear, in all these recordings, what I would do is I would set the camera up in the same state. I would let it record, wait for the hot card warning to come up, switch off the camera immediately, let it cool down for 20 minutes, switch it back on then again and put it recording in exactly the same state then again. And with the camera again in its default condition, I was getting roughly about seven minutes recording time after that 20 minute cool down period. The times did vary quite a bit strangely, but the average was roughly around seven minutes after that 20 minute cool down period. I let the camera cool down then again for four hours. Then I did my standard recording with the back LCD pulled out, waited for the hot car to come up, stopped it, let the camera cool down for 20 minutes and then started recording again. And in the second recording, again, it did vary quite a bit, but with the back LCD pulled out like that, I was getting just under eight minutes on average recording time. Again, it did vary quite a bit, but that's roughly one minute of a difference in the recording time by just pulling out the back LCD screen. Then I did exactly the same test in the same circumstances with USB PD, and there were mere seconds of a difference. It, it, it really genuinely wasn't worth talking about. But this is where it got really interesting then. I decided to pull out the back LCD screen to use the newer CA041 camera cage with the strain relief brackets attached and the metal USB-C and HDMI plug going in. So they were transferring the heat from the sockets onto the camera cage. And I was also using USB PD. I crazily got 11 minutes or just roughly around 11 minutes. It varied from 10 minutes and 43 seconds up to about 11 minutes and I think it was 20 something seconds of a difference. That they were the two extremes, but it was roughly around 11 minutes. I actually tested it four times. I was getting 11 minutes out of the second recording in these conditions. That is a massive difference. It went from a roughly around seven minutes just with the camera's bog standard to roughly around 11 minutes with it set up like that. That is a massive increase. So I hope this video has helped you. I hope it helped you understand how your Z8 is generating heat internally and how to get it out. And also, have you found anything that has really helped you get longer recording times out of your Z8 or help dissipate that heat. Maybe there's something here that I've missed and that I just it just hasn't clicked with me as of yet. Please do let me know in the comments down below. Thanks again for watching and see you out there.